Hi, this is John Peterson from RDG Woodwinds again. This is the fifth in a series of videos about adjusting your oboe. In this episode, we'll talk about the secondary adjustments on the lower joint. The first thing is the C to the E adjustment. You see this arm right under here that, uh, that does that. Secondly, the C to the E flat right here. And thirdly, the B to the C sharp. These last two were for trills. This one is for the pitch of the high C sharp. So again, um, I want to show you on an oboe that will look more like what you have. The first adjustment we'll be looking at is the C to the E, and that is obviously controlled by this screw right here. So the first thing to do, as in all the other adjustments, is to back the screw out. Then we touch the C key down gently, and in exactly the same manner as we've been doing, you feel for the motion and the sound of the E key. Slowly tighten the key until that disappears. Okay, it's gone. Verify it with the feeler gauge. And that feels good. Before we go on, I want to talk about loose keys a little bit and the importance of having the keys tightened. If you look and you notice here, this key is wobbling at the top. So what I've done is adjusted it in the exact same way that we just did, from the C to the E, and it feels the same from both pads. Now if I hold these two keys down, and now I lightly touch the C down, you can see that the feeler gauge is loose. The looseness in this key has fouled the adjustment from here to here because this is wobbling around and it's not staying in the same place twice. If you want a, an accurate adjustment, the keys have to be solid. While we're on the topic of loose keys, let's talk about the F-sharp, G-sharp bridge, because that's another key that sometimes suffers from the same problem that the C does. I find that it is often over-adjusted in oboes that I see that come into the shop. The G-sharp key is often wobbly. You can see how it's just a tiny bit wobbly, even on this brand new oboe. The screw to adjust this combination is this one here. And the technique is exactly the same. You screw the screw out, hold the G-sharp touch piece down, and feel for the motion of the key, and slowly turn in the screw until that goes away. In this case, I have quite a ways to go still. There we go, nearly there. I'm also listening for the sound. I think it needs to be tightened just a hair more. There we go. And as with the others, we just verify with the feeler gauge. That's a little bit over tightened. Okay. Even if this key is wobbly, you should be able to get it in adjustment well enough to play the F sharp, G sharp combination like this. Don't expect it to be able to play the low notes and be able to hold open the G-sharp key, though. You'll get a wobble in the sound. Let's talk about the adjustments between the C and the E-flat and the B and the C-sharp. The two screws involved are this one and this one. They're pretty easy to figure out. Put the oboe on the table, index finger on the C, pinky holding down the E flat and then
then you can use your right hand to check the motion and sound of this key. Obviously it needs to be tightened in exactly the same manner as we've been doing it all along. I don't know if you can see it, but there's just a tiny bit of motion still. Okay, that is done. So for the final adjustment, thumb on the C-sharp, pinky on the low B. It's hard to see in this shot, but that's what I'm doing. Leaves your fingers free for the adjustment. And it's exactly the same. You turn the screw in until the motion disappears and you can no longer hear the sound of the pad hitting the tone hole. Tiny bit of motion yet. There you go. And again, we just want to verify with the feeler gauge. Good and good. Good and good. The final two adjustments are not important to making the instrument play, but they are nice details. In order to have the F Rezo held down firmly, it's important to have just a tiny bit of lost motion in the E key. That's controlled by this screw right here. If you lower the height of this, then you get that little bit of play there. So we will try, turn in the screw slightly until you can just perceive a little bit of lost motion. There it is, just a little bit. What that does is add the strength of this spring, which is fairly strong, to the, str to the spring on the D, adds both of those springs to hold down this. The final adjustment on the lower joint of the oboe involves a screw that you probably always wondered about. That's this one here. What the heck does that thing do? Well, the answer to that is it controls the height of the E-flat pad relative when you're depressing it from the left-hand side here and the right-hand side here. I can't show everything I'm doing in the frame here, but out of the frame here I'm operating this key right here, the left-hand E-flat, and you can see that the E-flat key is being picked up there. So I'm going to hold that open with the left-hand E-flat key. Now, if I add the right hand, you can see it opens still farther. What that does is it'll give you a different pitch from the left hand E flat here to the right hand E flat here. So you need to get those the same. So going back to this screw here, oftentimes people see it sticking out on their oboes and just automatically screw it in, thinking that that's the right thing to do. Well, that is the reason why this doesn't open enough. What you have to do is back off the screw counterclockwise. And again, I'm holding this with my pinky. And you add the right hand to the left hand that is already open. And you can see that it's still moving just a little bit. So we need to go a little bit farther, backing it out. And now they're virtually the same. You can see it moving just a little bit, but that's okay.